how's it going? So I wanted to talk to you about the different modes of transport in terms of getting around Ukraine as an Englishman or an English speaking person that has little to no knowledge about the Russian or Ukrainian language. You don't speak Russian, do you? It is very easy to navigate around Ukraine. Now there's obviously multiple ways you can do that. Ukraine is obviously a very big country. It's literally one of the biggest countries in Europe, but it is well worth the time and effort required to navigate around the country. Now, obviously, some of the destinations are miles and miles apart. If you want to get from Lviv to Kiev, you're going to probably take anything between four to eight hours, depending on what mode of transport you take. To do this even from Kiev to Odessa, it would be between five and ten hours, depending on what type of transport you get. Okay, obviously if you fly, you'll be in these destinations in under an hour. But we're going to ignore the flying opportunities, but that is an option. You, you can fly between Kiev and Lviv and Kiev and Odessa and all of these little destinations. You, you can get a plane. If you're a high roller, you can probably get a private jet to these places. However, this video is not for you. This is for the people that would like to travel around Ukraine on public transport that probably don't speak Russian or Ukrainian very well. So how do you do that if you don't speak Russian or Ukrainian very well? I myself probably know less than 50 words in Ukrainian slash Russian. New Paroshki. And most of these words are not that useful when it comes to navigating around Ukraine. But it doesn't matter because there's an amazing device called Google and if you use Google Translate, you can pretty much navigate anywhere you want. Use your smartphone, speak into it, type into it, and then display what you want to say to the individual or let them listen to what you've just said in Russian or Ukrainian. If you're in the west of the country, please use Ukrainian. If you're in the east of the country, people tend to use Russian more. But mostly, everyone knows Russian. So if you just download the Russian, you're not going to be offending anyone unless, of course, you're in the West, around Lviv. They really don't like you speaking Russian. Imagine you've just landed in Kiev and you want to see the rest of the country. I urge you, and I'm not working for Google here, make sure you're using Google Maps. Google Maps will enable you to navigate from place to place with ease and finesse. For example, if you say to yourself, right, I'd like to go to Odessa and I'm in the middle of Kiev, how do I get there, Google? Google will show you on via the app. I know this is very basic, but it's going to get very much more complicated in a moment. Google Maps is going to show you the different modes of transport that pop up. It's going to show you the trains, it's going to show you the buses, and it's also going to show you this thing called shared rides called Blah Blah Car. Now, if you're French, you would have definitely heard about Blah Blah Car. The English don't seem to embrace Blah Blah Car as much, and it's not as well used in America. However, hopefully the time will come where it's used all over the world. But a lot of Europeans certainly know what blah blah car is and it's incredibly well used in Ukraine. What that means is there could be a hundred individuals in a hundred different cars offering lifts from Kiev to Odessa. Now you either go on the blah blah car app. Now this is where it gets complicated. If you already use the British app or the French app or maybe the Norwegian app, you will run into problems here because if you search via the app on the English app, for example, you'll see zero destinations. However, if Google is showing you there's 100 destinations. Why is it showing you there's 100 destinations? It's because Google is lifting the data from the Ukrainian version of the app. So what you need to do is delete your native language version of blah blah car install the Ukrainian version of Blah Blah Car and then suddenly you'll have all of the journeys that are going on throughout the entire country of Ukraine. But what this does mean is suddenly your app will no longer be in English or French. So your app will no longer be in your native language. So what does this mean? Well, to get around this if you don't speak Ukrainian, what I would advise you to do is screenshot the important pages of that app and then take those screenshots into Google Translate. Google Translate will then tell you what those screenshots mean. It might say book this journey or to and from, you know, the basic stuff. Most of it's obvious. And thankfully, it also understands the English alphabet. What you then need to do is search for the journey. So you're searching Kiev to Odessa, for example. 
all of the journeys will pop up. It will then show you the shared rides. It will also show you buses. Um, and to pick your journey, depending on price, depending on time, sort it by time, sort it by price, you, you name it. You can sort it any way, you, any way you like, even by driver's rating. Pick the driver that you're comfortable with. I don't think anyone lasts if they've got one star, but if most people on the app generally have five stars because a little bit like Uber, they want to remain on the app, so they behave like decent, good people. The app will enable you to see who you're traveling with, so it might say you're going to be traveling with Sasha's the driver and you'll be traveling with Olga. That's a very high possibility, not those names, but it's a high possibility that you will be traveling with someone because the driver will want to fill the car with as many people as possible. Generally, most drivers like to have two in the back and one in the front, maximum. It's very rare that drivers will put three in the back, and I think it's impossible to put more than three in the back. But you get to see that before you make your booking. Message the driver. This is where you need to use Google Translate again. Message them in Ukrainian, because the app is in Ukrainian. If you want to message them in Russian, if you're in Eastern Ukraine, that's also possible. But it's probably more polite if you're in Western Ukraine to be messaging them in Ukrainian. Book the journey. If it's with a driver, you're probably just going to pay in cash as soon as you get in the car. Or normally, which is a Ukrainian custom, as soon as the journey is complete, you pay the driver. Give them five stars as if it's a good journey, and I'm sure it will be a good journey. If it's a bus that you're booking, which is what I've done today, I'm in Kropnyetsky and I'm heading to the east. I tried to find a shared ride, but I found a bus instead. So by booking a bus, I had to pay with Google Pay or you can pay with your credit cards. Very, very easy. The alternatives are train travel. And trains are amazing in Ukraine. You get overnight trains, sleeper trains, high speed trains, you've got super slow trains, you name it. Whatever type of train you can think of, they pretty much have it in Ukraine. Okay, they don't have bullet trains, but maybe one day. To book a train, there is multiple apps. Now, I recommend using your smartphone to book a train. A lot of apps have become obsolete in the years that I've been traveling in Ukraine. However, there is this one app that I'm currently using. It's this app. Use the um, link in the description if you'd like to download that app. Via that app, you can make a purchase of a train ticket. I tell you the reason to use the app because you do not want to turn up at the train station hope for the best, realize you're queuing up in the wrong ticket booth because in Ukraine, each ticket booth sells a different destination for a different company. So you might be queuing for 20 minutes, a mistake I made when I first came to Ukraine. You'd be queuing for 20 minutes, get to the front of the, to the ticket office, give them your best uh, Google translation rendition on Ukrainian or Russian, and then you realize you're in the wrong ticket booth, you need to go to ticket booth 20. Once you get to ticket booth 20, you then realize they've sold out of tickets and then you have to wait another day to get a ticket. It's far easier in the modern world in 2021, 2022, whenever you watch this, it's far easier to book your ticket in advance on the app. Pick your seat, pick your bed. Recommendation for a sleeper train, if you book a sleeper train going on a long haul destination, for example, you might be leaving Odessa at 11 o'clock at night to get to Kiev for about 8 a.m. in the morning. Yes, it's a slow train, but you get to sleep. You're saving money on accommodation because you're not needing accommodation that night. And to be honest, if you book a nice sleeper carriage, it's a very comfortable night's rest. I sleep incredibly well on sleeper trains. I think it's the rocking motion. As long as you don't get a carriage with a heavy snorer where you get your own private carriage, you're going to sleep well. Alternatives of getting around, of course, are Uber, Bolt, Uklon, it's discount codes for all of those below. I don't think I have a discount code for Uklon yet. However, if that changes, I'll put a link in the description. But I do have discount codes for Uber and Bolt. And that's basically it. An alternative way of getting around, obviously, is to make as many friends as possible. Oh, friend! Oh, new friend! Friend! Oh, friend! Please be my friend! Oh, friend! Oh, friend! Make friends with people that are driving. Sorry. <laughs> they might drive you to their family homes, they might drive you to their favorite destinations, and then you might repay the favor by renting a car to go to the more obscure destinations. Uh, if you want to rent a car, that's also plausible. You get to go to the mountains, you get to go to the countryside, a little off the beaten track. However, I totally recommend public transport. A lot of me speaking there, and I really hope if you get to go to Ukraine or you are in Ukraine, 
use the public transport and use it well, you're going to have a good time. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you like this content, click subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.